we thank you tonight. God, we give you all the glory. And Lord, we exalt you above everything. Every problem. Father, every doubt, every fear. God, we exalt you tonight.
together and to call on your holy and your righteous name. Our Father in heaven, we come before the throne of grace this evening to say thank you first of all for the blessing of life. Somebody didn't wake up this morning, but you spared us. Somebody woke up and couldn't turn over, but you spared us. Somebody woke up and didn't know that they were in the world, but you allowed us to move and have our being. To go about to see this beautiful day, unscathed and unhurt. And even though some people cut us off in traffic and do all of the things and all that are not pleasant, but you still spared us. Because we could have been in an accident this evening and not made it to this revival. But Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, for your blessings that you have sent down before us. You give us a new day every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And we thank you, Lord, for your love and your kindness. Because you said from one blood spring all nations. And we are to treat one another as brothers and sisters because that's what we are. You made us that way. But there are some people who allow the enemy to infiltrate their mind. And they think that they are above and beyond other people simply because the enemy has blinded them. But God, I thank you for giving the vision to these pastors to have just this one night revival to reach some soul, some young person, some old person that needs a change in their life. You told Nicodemus, my father, don't you know that you are a teacher in Israel and you don't know that you have to be born again. But Lord, we need to tell these young people that Jesus came into the world a long time ago, nearly 2,000 years ago. Right. Took our sins upon himself, nailed it to a cross, and wrote in blood, paid in full. Right. Your sins are forgiven, but you've got to come to him and accept yeah. the blessing that he has poured out on us. Yeah. Lord, we need you to, to, to touch our young people. We need you to touch them, Lord, so they will stop the killing. We need you to touch them so they will stop shooting in houses. We need you to touch the parents as well, Lord, and let them know that children do things wrong, and we need not uphold them in their wrong. We need not praise them when they're young and they talk back and all of the other things that they do. We need to discipline our children. We need to discipline our children. We need to go down to the house of prayer. Come in this house. Come in this house and tell Jesus about our problems. You ought to stop talking about COVID and tell COVID about your God. Because God is bigger than COVID. God can heal anything. I know he can heal because he healed me 18 years ago. And I'm so grateful for what he has done for me. Lord, I thank you. I remember we used to walk up and down these streets out here when they were gravel. Went down to the Founder and Work and Debart Raven and Black Hole Chemical National Asphalt and all the other places, Lord. All those places are gone now. But you're still in charge. And you're still in control. And you will be there forever. So if we've got a problem, and I thank you for allowing these pastors to come together. It doesn't matter about denominations and all that kind of stuff and all. That's something man-made. We are need to come together in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter whether you are Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, or whatever. Jesus Christ loves all of us. 
And he told Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the very gates of hell will not prevail against me. We need a coming together, my father. That song says, I went in the valley one day to pray. My soul got happy. And I stayed all day. We need you, Jesus, in these trying times. We need you when people are going astray, when people are doing everything that they think they want to do. And God, we know you can turn things around. When Peter was put in jail, Herod was going to execute him the next day. You sent your angel. Woke him up, Peter was fast asleep. And that's what that, that's what I was like about God. If you are in God or in Christ, you can sleep in situations to where you know that your life will be taken from you the next day, but God has a plan. God sent his angel to touch him, told him, get up, Peter, put your clothes on, put your shoes on, guard yourself and come and follow me. Let him between those two gods to change off his hand. Got him out to the gate and the gate opened by itself. Peter walked out and said, well, I don't know, I'm in a dream or what? But then when he came to himself, he knew that the church was in prayer for him. And when the church goes in prayer, nothing can stop what God has ordained for his people. And we need you, God, today. The church is going in prayer, and we are going in prayer for our children, Lord. We are going in prayer that you will change hearts and change minds, Lord, and change mindsets. And tell these young people that we love you, Lord. We love you, people. And we don't want to see you in jail or in prison. We want you to change your mind. Change that mindset. And come back to Christ. I ask these blessings in the name of your son Jesus and for his sake. Amen. 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 Oh, I feel that revival. Amen. We praise thee, O oh Lord. For the song of our love, turn to the hymnals if you don't know all of it like me. Amen. Revive us when he began. 348 is the red hymnal. And sing it if you want to be revived. Sing it like you want to be revived. Don't, don't, don't just drag through it. Amen. Lift your voice up. From the depths of your soul. Yeah. 
grateful to God for that. One of the things the modern church, and I'm going to try to be finished in about 15 or 18 minutes, and I'll pray mighty there. Because I too want you to get out of here and go home. Sometime, sometime tonight. One thing the modern church needs to get back to is getting outside of her walls and taking the message of Jesus. Do you not know that there are more people who are not coming to church than there are who come? And if we're going to take the uh, uh, to take this message to the massive man of every birth, we got to get out of here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I really, I really, I really see the church as I do a service station. My son and Dennis and his wife. Uh, they have been flying to and fro to Nevada. She got a new assignment this summer in California, and they had to carry some stuff, so they drove. They drove the SUV and packed it, but before they left, they went to the service station. Tune up. I had the tires, checked the belt, changed the oil, and got on the road. And we come to the service station every Sunday and don't do nothing. But come back again. I believe that the church is designed and empowered to send us out. Amen. Yes, send us out. Amen. Do you not know that most of the miracles Jesus performed and most of the work that he did was outdoors? Very little did he do in the temple. When he cast out demons in most cases he was outdoors. When he healed sick folk, he was outdoors. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When he opened blinded eyes, yes. he was outdoors. Yes. When he raised Lazarus from the grave, right. he was outdoors. Yes, sir. And when he filled that fountain with his blood, Y'all know he was outdoors, don't yes, you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And all of his great work was outdoors. And listen, he said to us, Go ye therefore and preach and teach to all nations. Go ye therefore in the hedges and highways and compel men, yes, yes. compel them, work at it. Yes, sir. Be convincing and convicting in your argument. Yes, yes. Compel them because hell is too hot to go to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And heaven is too wonderful yes. to miss. Yes, yes, go. That's what he said to the church. And we have the gall to call ourselves missionary Baptists. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, in most cases, that's a real joke. Because yes, we ain't going nowhere. Yes, now, I'm I ain't talking about mourners, but I'm talking about most folk. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We ain't going nowhere. Yes, sir. Sinners can be right around the church and we fail to tell them about Jesus. Do you not
not know that the story of Jesus, the gospel of Jesus Christ, is the power of God unto salvation. To the Jews first, but to everyone who believes. And let me tell you, it is not just the preacher's job. Please don't make that mistake. To think that the preacher is the only one who's supposed to be getting this gospel out. The preacher is the overseer and the feeder of the flock and, to, and the preparer of the flock so that you can go. Yeah, yeah. Saints beget saints. Preachers prepare saints to get saints. I was reading the other day and uh, I, I read where Jesus sent his 12 disciples out and he sent them out witnessing in, in Luke chapter 9. They came back um, with a good report. But in chapter 10, uh -huh. he called 70 others. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah, you yeah. You're the others. Yeah. <laughs> and he sent them out two by two. Yeah. They didn't have a title. Come on. Say that, God. Say that. All they had was an encounter with the Lord. And Jesus told them to go. And I want to tell you today, let me tell you what they encountered when they went out. They came back rejoicing and they came back and told Jesus, even demons were subject unto us in your name. And I need to tell somebody, you can go anywhere. I don't care how big the devils are in the quarters, in the hood, in the projects. Demons are subject to the name of Jesus. And Jesus said with his cool self, he said, I know. He said, while you were out, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Y'all yeah, yeah. read that passage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While you were out proclaiming my name, the devil and his kingdom started falling. No wonder the devil is raising so much hell and he empowering so many people. The church is paralyzed. Yeah, yeah. She's constipated. She can get a whole lot of stuff in, but nothing out. Now, you know that'll kill you, don't you? All this good stuff you getting up in here, file of preaching. I know he's a preacher. Y'all ain't that even got to tell me. All this good stuff he's giving you, and you sitting on it, you holding it. You need to do more than say amen to it. Yeah. You need to say, that's right, preacher. I'm going to tell that. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody need to go tell it. The world needs to hear. I brought two books that I, 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 I love, and one is America's Only Hope, Tony Evans, a black brother out of Texas, uh, who is a prolific writer. And Tony says that, uh, Dr. Evans said that the church, he talks about how bad off the world is, how sinful we are, and how dangerous we are, how broken, how poverty stricken we are, how many problems we have in the world, and how sociology cannot help us, psychiatry cannot help yeah. us. But he says the church is America's only hope. Yeah. Because we have the healing for this world. We have the gospel. We have the saving grace. 
You know Jesus told us don't go nowhere, don't do nothing, go to Jerusalem and tear and wait there until the Holy Ghost come and then you shall be witnesses unto me. Then once you have received power, this wicked dying world cannot change until she encounters the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's us. I don't know how you feel about it, but the older I get, the more serious I become about this new church. It is America's only hope. It is the hope of Holt. Yeah. It is the hope of Tuscaloosa. Yeah. If the church fails, community is gone. And guys, listen, we're going to have to stand up. Hold your head up and open your mouth. Tell dying men and women everywhere that Jesus died for you. And you can have eternal life. Yeah, Dr. David Jeremiah writes, I never thought I'd see the day. And in there he said, I never thought I'd see the day when the church would become so quiet. He said, I never thought I'd see the day when atheists would go after defending their position more than we defend ours. David Jeremiah said, I, I never thought I'd live and see the day when the church becomes so quiet and so corrupt. And so guys, we, 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 we got to get up. We got to take this message and this inspiration from singing and this information from preaching. We got to take it in and go do something with it. Yeah, yeah. The Lord is counting on us. We are his voices. We are his mouthpiece. I'm going to say this and I'm going to be through. Brother, I, got, I have three short stories about witnessing, about getting outside of the walls that I want to tell. Uh, several years ago, uh, Charles, my brother, y'all know Charles. Y'all remember Charles. Charles was working out here at Ryko Chemical and he ran into a guy who uh, was unsaved and Charles had sang and preached and hollered at him and you know y'all remember Charles yeah. but he wanted to present a serious witness to him and he called me up one day and said Smith I want you to go with me I'm going to see his brother tonight and he said he's going to take time for us and we went to his house and Charles told me, I want you to lead and share the plan of salvation. I've already prayed with him, I've talked to him, I've hollered at him, I've fussed at him, I've done everything, but you lead. And I went in to that brother's house and shared the plan of salvation. I just simply told him that if he would confess with his mouth and believe in his heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, that he can be saved. I said, man, do you believe that? He said, yeah. I said, do well, you want the Lord to come into your life? He said, Reverend, I've been waiting on this for a long time. Yeah. So I led him to Christ. We led him to Christ that night, Charles, and I hooked and the, the, the high-fived each other and got ready to go home. And his wife came to the door while we were standing in the door, she came out of the back and she said, if my husband is saved and going to heaven, I want to go too. <laughs> this is no lie. We closed the door, went back in the house and led her and they went to Beulah. They went to Beulah. Um, and we led her to Christ. And you told my two happy folk that night, and we got ready to go again, and we looked back, there was a 14-year-old daughter. I wouldn't stand in the pulpit and lie to you. I promise you I would. She simply said to us, I don't want to be left here by myself. If my parents are going to heaven, I want to go too. Man, you talk about having a good time that night. 
And we didn't do nothing but just take a little bit of this word right here. We didn't have no magic phones or anything. We had no all. We didn't dance. We didn't play no drums. We just went in there and shared the word. Three folk got saved and got baptized. Benson, Reverend Benson baptized them. Um, and that was a wonderful experience. There was another time that was a member of our church at Bethel Show Beth, I got over there. She said to me, Pastor, I want you to go to my house. My mama has no legs. I want you to go to her house. Well, she has no legs and she's not saved and I want her saved. So we planned to go to the mother's house and somehow all of the grandchildren and the other children showed up. And we led that woman to Christ and about 13 of her family members, one by one, was led to Christ that night. Now I know what I'm talking about because I baptized 13 out of that family. The woman with no leg, we put her in a chair, tied a sheet around her. We put her in the pool that day. We took her under the water. I'm simply saying when the church goes out, when saints go marching out, not when marching in. And I'm going to tell you this last one. Barbara and I were flying from California, Los Angeles, somewhere one summer. And we stopped in Dallas and a guy got on the plane going to New Orleans. And so Barbara sat by the window. I told her, you sit by the window. I'm going to sit in the middle. <laughs> I ain't going to have this man separate me and you. Do you feel me? I sat in the middle, and so we just struck a conversation. I started talking to him about the Lord, and he started feeling it. And led the brother to Christ between Dallas and New Orleans. And he, now listen, here's, here's the big story. He said, Reverend, I need you to know something. I'm a runner for a drug ring. And he said, I'm on my way to New Orleans to laundry $150,000. I'm getting scared to death. <laughs> and he reached under his seat and pulled out a little carry-on bag. At that time, you could carry on bags. And he opened that, he had two of them, and he opened that bag up, and I saw the green. He said, I had $150,000 worth of ones and fives and tens and twenties. And he said to me, Reverend, what am I supposed to do? I said, zip that bag up, <laughs> take it to them folk, go your way and sin no more, and leave me alone. All I'm saying, my brothers and sisters, is that the gospel still has power to save folk. People who have no intentions of being saved, the gospel will challenge and change them so much so until they say, what must I do to be saved? And every one of us ought to be able to tell them to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and thy shall be saved. You know the story, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank you, Dr. Fowler. Thank you, Morning Star, for allowing me to share this little nugget with you today.
Chapter 6, chapter 6, and in verse 16, the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 6, 
verse 16. Thus says the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein. And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Thus says the Lord, stand in the way and see and ask for the old path. Where he is the good way and walk therein. And you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. I'm going to talk about the, the, the revival we need. the revival we need for the church if there's something to be revived it means that we got to get something back that we used to have If you're going to resuscitate a person who has lost consciousness, and if you are successful, you will have given them something back that they used to have. And if you are not successful in reviving them, for them it is over. Could it be said? Well, let me say it like this. Don't let it be said for the church that it is over. It makes you wonder sometimes. It, 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 it makes you wonder at all of the singing and praying and teaching and preaching and auxiliary work and all of the other stuff that we do. And we look at the world around us, there's only this way to hell. And they don't mind anything that the church have to say. Is it really over? There was a time if you had said that revival was going on in church, every pew would be filled. let alone revival on Sunday morning. Yes, I'm talking about on Sunday morning when the houses of worship were filled. Amen. And check this out. We didn't have the things that we have now. What you say? I, I, mean, I mean, we got it good because most of us in here 
went to a church where you, you didn't even have a car. Amen. Amen. But on Sunday, All right. the houses of worship were, they were filled. Folk had worked all week long and labored all week long. They had scuffled to just to put bread on, on the table and, and, and put together their nickels and dimes and quarter to pay the cheap rent that was difficult to pay as it is now. I remember when mama and daddy paid rent sometimes a little bit $35, $40. It wasn't eight hundred and twelve hundred and fifteen hundred dollars like it is now, but that thirty-five and forty-five dollar was just as hard to pay then yeah. as it is now. But yet, when the doors of the church were open, they were here, and now. We have cars, we live in good, we work good, good job, we got plenty of clothes, we got plenty of food, we got stuff that we don't even need, we got some stuff that we forgot that we even own. And I said, and, and then they came to church on Sunday morning after having a hellacious week. With no more than a house full of children, and then come to church and have the audacity to get half in shot. Yeah. Yeah. And we doing, we doing, we doing all right. Yeah. And God has been good to us and brought us from a mighty long way. And some of us know that the only reason we are here tonight is because of the goodness and greatness of God and yet we will not even come to the house of God and then when we get here we won't even say anything. Yeah. Look at other folk on they say hallelujah. Yeah. Right. 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 Some, some folks scared to shout because some folk believe that if you shout in church publicly, that you got some problems at home. And it makes you wonder, is it over? Well, briefly, Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. He was not popular. Uh, God called him to preach. And this, the strange thing about it is that God called him to preach. And when he preached, nobody wanted to hear it. And then when he shows up to preach, they perhaps find it difficult to understand what he's saying because he was busy wiping bitter tears from his eyes because he was the weeping prophet. And he was the prophet and, and a prophet is known not but about what his opinion is or what his commentary is. We got too many opinion folk, amen, preaching the gospel and too many commentators on the gospel. Jeremiah showed up and just said, thus said the Lord. I'm not your favorite person, but thus said the Lord. I, I'm inarticulate, but thus says the Lord. My eyes are filled with tears, but thus says the Lord. And, and, and tonight, Jeremiah writes is that thus saith the Lord. Well, it might do us well if we can revive. Simply what thus said the Lord. 
with thus saith the Lord. Because now people are worshiping at the altar of what's new. But the prophet of God only speaks that which God tells him to speak. And the prophet wasn't just some kind of a spiritual fortune teller. The prophet spoke to the time in which he and the people lived. He would talk about the future, but only he talked about the future as it relates to the present. Or he would let them know what the future would be if they did or did not do certain things. He spoke to his time. He spoke to, to, to the contemporary issues because the contemporary issues for Jeremiah at that time, uh, the nation was headed to destruction. See, folk now want them a prophet to tell them some good stuff. Paul writes to Timothy that in, 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 in the last day, men will not endure sound doctrine, but will heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears. Folk want them a preacher now that will suit their fancy. They want to know what school you went to and where you matriculated at and, and all that stuff. If I did go to school and I learned what they learned, if I told you what they learned, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and what you need to know, not just where he went to school, but you might need to check to see if he knows Jesus. You might want to start there. Yes, our pastor matriculated at, uh, he matriculated at Morehouse. I, I, he went to Harvard School of Divinity, but does, does he know Jesus? And so the prophet of God, Jeremiah, spoke to the people because the nation was headed for impending doom and they were carrying on their business as usual and God raised up a man to tell them that they could be saved. Things are happening so regular and so rapid in our communities that we've come to accept that that child, you know what, it's just like that. It, it just is what it is. God makes it possible for the world to be saved. And you and, 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 and you got church folk. I'm talking about church folk. Some some of us some of us are pastors. We talk like it's over. This week, Pastor Moore and some of the others will be preaching in, in the housing project, sharing the gospel. Now, now, and, and let me say this to you, too, is that, that, that the housing project are, are just starting points because the same problem that you have in the housing project, we don't want people to think that they're being stigmatized or that they're being profiled because they live in the project because the same problem that you have in the project, you got it in the subdivision. Amen. The project ain't no bad place to live. Matter of fact, I remember when my mama moved to Branscombe, and then I, we were just as proud of that government housing project as we could be, because we had been living in shacks and double tenant houses with with with, with bathrooms on the back porch. You could smell the rotten wood in the house, two room shack where you could look up and see outdoors. Uh, when you look through the ceiling, look through the floor, and you can. 
stuff the wall with newspaper and all of that stuff like that. And Lord have mercy, we got us a brick house. Five bedrooms. And we were used to we were used to sleeping on top of each other. I, we had Papa's bed and then my granddaddy bed and there were four bars at home and and, and Ron and Babe slept at the top of the bed. Lily and I we slept at the foot of the bed. Come on, son. You didn't know whether it was you or your brother that peed in the bed. And since the Lord is speaking, that means that we ought to be listening. There was a little farmer, dirt farmer, who was walking in New York City down the street and another man headed to Wall Street with a briefcase, could hear the taxes zooming by ambulance and people honking their horns and more of revving and people walking down the sidewalk. He said, I hear cricket. <laughs> man in the briefcase said, I don't think you hear a cricket. He said, with all of the noise and the blaring the horns and the sirens and all of the hustle and the bustle, there's no way that you can hear a cricket in this busy city. He went over to where uh, there was a plant uh, in, a, in a pot and he rubbed through the leaves and lo and behold, he pulled out a cricket and the man said, the man said to him, he said, you know what? That, that's just unbelievable that you can hear a cricket. He said, well, look, I'm from the country, and I'm a, and I'm a dirt farmer. He said, he said I, I knew, a, I heard the cricket yeah. because I, I, I'm used to listening to it. Yeah. When was the last time that you have heard the Lord speak? And maybe if you have not heard him speak, you have not grown accustomed to listening to him. Thus says the Lord. You don't have to like fire. Thus says the Lord. But I don't like his preaching style. That's cool. They didn't like Jeremiah's either. Amen. But 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 but, but, but thus says the Lord. Yeah. Jeremiah, you don't know what you're talking about because when you found out that you was a preacher, you were 14 years old, and you had some questions, amen, about you being so young as a preacher. And I had to let you know that Jeremiah. I knew you before, amen, your mama and your daddy laid down, I knew who you was, you know what I mean? You could be, thus said the Lord. People are not going to take you seriously. Well, anyhow. He said, now this is what you do. He said that when you come to a crossroads, that we said, stand in the ways, in the crossroad are different directions you can take. You can go left, you go right, you go forward, you go backwards. And at this time, when Jeremiah is preaching, and when he is the prophet to the nation, they were at the crossroad. 
They knew what it was to be a sovereign nation. They knew what it was to be a powerful nation. But little by little, slowly but surely, what they used to be was being chipped away. And when they looked around, when they looked around, things that did not look like they should look, they have now become worshippers at the altar of what's new, the latest fad and, and the, the latest fashion. All, all somebody got to do is come to town, they man, and say that they are a prophet, that they are an apostle, that I got some oil, and I'm going to pray this prayer, and I'm going to give you this handkerchief, and here we go. And I'm not mad with folk, you know, they got a, a whole heap of folk over there at the church of the Highlands and, and the folk, I mean, in some in, in some in some of our folk, you know, over, over there. I, I, you know, it amazes me how a new church can come to town and they can feel that up and they have to feel up old. Just like Jesus, they're not getting the tusk loose. never been here. And we are at the crossroads of decision about what and where our community will be. Now what he said, he said go to, to, to the crossroad and what I need you to do is, is that I need you to make up your mind of what you're going to be. I know there's some things that you haven't got it figured out yet of what God wants you to do and what God wants you to be. And some of us are still asking the question, Lord, what is your purpose for my life? Where should I, should I go? Well, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. It is not a matter of whether God is not speaking. It is an a issue of whether you can hear. We are at the crossroad when we as a nation and we as a people are in moral and spiritual free fall. Oh, the children just bad. The mom of this or, or the daddy is that if, there, if there's no daddy in the home. Now some people can use that for an excuse if they want to because back in the day there was a whole lot of women who did not have a husband in the house and then raised their children. It, it, I, I don't want to hear that. And, 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 if, and if you're in a toxic relationship, it might be good that the dad ain't in the house. Wow. We come to see all that. Anyway. Stay in the ways. Examine the issues that are at hand. Children killing should be unacceptable. Every weekend in this small, quaint, bedroom, non-destination town, unless it's football season, is nothing to stop in Tuscaloosa for. You ain't got no theme park, you ain't got no theater, you, 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 you ain't got nothing. Come on, son. Come on, son. But every weekend, there's a grieving mother that's riding behind of a hearse with her son having been sisterly murdered. And why you ought to be in part because most of those boys are your boys. We 
are at the crossroad now that if you have a teenage son in your house, he is a young man in your house that's black. He is a hazard to your house. Can you imagine that? You can't go everywhere with your child and you can't know all of his friends and who knows him and, and what they do and your child get up and make the wrong connection or he gets something that belongs to somebody and ain't nothing paid for it. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Amen. He, that dope man, amen, looking for his money. Like Smith said, can I man his money? And when you don't show up with his money, amen, it become a hazard to your head because he drive by your house and shoot your house up. A black male should not be a hazard to your health. And it be acceptable. And then, and then, and then, and then, let me say this, then I'm going to get out the way. Our black males, the devil, has launched an all-out war. You don't care how you raised them? Well, the devil let it. They don't care how bright they are? The devil won it. And, 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 and let me tell you something. I, I find out that the only way to deal with a bullet Father, Hello, brother. Now, don't go to school and be fighting nobody. Amen. Yes, sir. But don't take no whole lot either. Yeah. Now, the way you deal with a bullet, well, you got to stand up to it. And the people of God must stop allowing the devil to punk us out. Just to use a, 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 a few sports terms, if anybody here ever played basketball, uh, sometimes uh, the coach will call a defense that's called a full court press. Amen. Full court press, not zone. Every man on a man. Making it difficult for them to move or to pass or to shoot the ball. The things that are going on in our community calls for from the people of God a full court press. In football, they call it a blitz. <laughs> we are in spiritual warfare. He's fighting for the mind and the heart of our people. The church of the living God must fight for the soul of our people. And the soul of our community. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. You know, you are responsible, amen, for what goes on in who? Are y'all hearing me? If y'all let them sell dope, they're going to sell it. Amen. If you let them keep the surroundings any kind of way, they keep it that kind of way. And when the community changes from homeowners to renters, they don't care about the communities like they used to care about the communities. People didn't have much, they had little shack houses, but when they got to the houses, they had flowers in the yard. They, they made it look good, they made it, they made it feel like a home that somebody lived there. 
We are at the crossroads. And he said, go in and take a look at the crossroads of life. He said, and when you get there, you need to seek information. We, we need information. We need information. In, in the next few days, in the next few days, Amen. We can't just have revival one time because we got some stuff going on in the, in the community. Our churches got, got we, have, we must stop being that one and done, hit it and quit it. Amen. The devil has an all out war declared on us and our community and we got to fight back with a full court press and with the blitz. Amen. We got to Make the devil know that we mean business. Amen. We got to arm ourselves with what we need. In the next few days, we'll be calling for black organizations in our community, and there are some that are doing a whole lot of good. Amen. But we have what I call loose confederation. Everybody is doing his or her own thing. So we'll be calling for the next few days. Not only must we organize ourselves. So I'm not trying to be the spotlight in hope. And I'm not trying to make the that the light shine on me, amen. If if somebody is doing something in a group or with an organization, we want to find out what they are doing so we can organize ourselves so we ain't running over each other and how we can support and coordinate each other. We must have an organization and we must have the information that we need as long as I'm doing my thing over here and Smith doing his thing over there. They can keep us divided and know that we're not going to do any real and lasting good for our community. We must not only organize but we must mobilize. You gotta have a plan. All right. Hey man, you know, you know, black folk, we already fitting into something. Go ahead, Doctor. Some of us been fitting to do something for twenty years. We fitting to do something. But we must mobilize. And so he says, stand at the crossroad of, of, of decision and arm yourselves with whatever it is that you need. And I want you to know tonight is that whatever we need, God has already given it to us. Stop, stop playing yourself short. Amen. Stop believing the lie of what folks say that you are. Amen. Just because your boy got dreads and tattoos on his arm, that doesn't make him a small time hustler, a man of a gang member. Stop, except I can wear my hair however I want to. We got the scissors to make. But we got to go back. He said, he asked for the old past. Where are they? The things that brought us through hard times. Oh, yes. We sang a song back in the day. Yeah. Give me that old time religion. And so then he says, the time, if we find the old path, where is the good way? <laughs> I want you to know that we are better people than what we are being portrayed. God has given us everything that we need to survive. And not only to survive, but also to thrive. Stop looking 
for somebody on the outside to come and save you. Yes, if morning star is going to be a better church, it's going to be a better church because of the folk who are already here. Yes, uh, and stop waiting for somebody else to, to hand you out something. Yeah. Yes, God has given us everything that we need to be who we need to be. Yes, and, uh, so then he said, ask for the old path and uh, the good way. <clears throat> Well, what is that uh, good way? <clears throat> well, uh, the good way is when uh, we had uh, a genuine love for God. Oh, no, no, no. We've got to, we got to get back uh, on our knees like we did the night uh, and start uh, praying uh, for, for our folk. Y'all heard the night uh, when the church uh, get back and revive uh, prayer in the church. Uh, you'll see uh, a different in, uh, in, uh, in the church. Uh, then y'all hear tonight Peter was in jail but uh, they did not call uh, the NAACP and uh, tell them uh, I need y'all to stay or protest it. Uh, they didn't call uh, the ACLU uh, to file a writ uh, or have his corporal uh, for quick relief uh, from prison. Uh, yeah, and the saint got together down uh, at Mary's house. Uh, and they called uh, on uh, the name Oh, Lord. Can I get a witness here? Everybody in here, back in your house, you need to revive, to revive an altar. Can I get a witness here? Everybody, now and then, make the children, and whoever at your house, put that cell phone in the tablet down. Is that come on in here? Uh, we gonna hang out a little talk with Jesus. Uh, and I get a witness here. Uh, and we, the church went in prayer. God moved. Yeah. And I know that there's somebody in the room tonight who need, who need the Lord to move. Can I get a witness there? Oh, mama, but I tell you, I tell you uh, to have a little talk with Jesus. He will, he will, he will, he will, he will make a return of all right. Good evening, y'all. Where he is, where he is the whole way. Don't forget, uh, yeah, the song uh, that brought you through. Get uh, under the wicked uh, hair. Now you got some issues, uh, you got some burdens, uh, you got some problems uh, that won't go away. Uh, do like Big Mama and Grandma do uh, while washing dishes uh, and watching clothes. Uh, yeah, you will hear them uh, at the sink, uh, at the store. Uh, Father, Father, can't you hear him saying? I stretch my hand to thee, no other help I know. Can't you hear them, uh, them moaning and groaning? And I do well, uh, you will hear them saying, uh, Precious Lord. Oh, did he have to be in a church? 
something, man. But after a while, uh, you hear furniture moving around the house.
God bless you tonight. I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why he cares. Sinners. 
See, folk can be sinners now, Sister Spencer, and you ain't got to be shamed by none of them. Amen. Amen. You, amen. You don't want nobody to hit you. You don't want nobody praying for you. Amen. But we're not trying to shame you out. We're just trying to keep you from going to hell. Amen. We're just trying to keep you from going to hell. And prayerfully that you can live that abundant life that he talks about in the here and now. Amen. God bless you today. God keep you. Is our prayer. Amen. Thank you. Come on, let's do an offering as generous as the Lord have blessed you. It's good to see her Lanzel. I hadn't seen him in a minute. I'm glad to see my nephew Aaron tonight. Is that your real back there? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Candace and I. Who is that? Is that Lemon Barnes? Who is that? Who's that over here back right there? Oh, 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 that's one of them. Amen. Those urban girls. Amen. 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 To see God move. See, folk, folk don't even see God move in the church no more. Right. Amen. We want to be a church where the Lord shows up, yes, sir. where sick bodies are healed. Yes. Amen. The devil, amen, is put in his place. God can still do what he's been doing, y'all. Yes. Amen. We need to reclaim the power. That God has given us. Amen. Go back to doing what, what worked. Amen. Doing what worked. God bless you. God keep you. Anything from the floor tonight? Anything from the floor tonight? Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Moore. Amen. You were. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Oh, as a matter of fact, I got, let me see, let me see who I want to get those. You know what? I think I'm going to get those to the urban girl. Amen. Amen. We, we have two tickets. Tell them about what's going to be on that thing. Well, good, good evening, everyone. We are having a breakfast on Saturday morning from 8 to 12. And it will be a breakfast where you uh, just come and get your plate and go. It will not be a sit-down breakfast because of CDC guidelines. We will have grits, eggs, toast, biscuit, um, tater tot casserole, red hot bologna, turkey bacon, um, regular bacon, sausage, uh, fruit. We're going to do a morning star style. So we're asking everyone to come out and support. This is part of our vision um, that the pastor has for this church for his 40 years of preaching. We're trying to raise $40,000 for Morning Star Baptist Church. And we're asking everyone to come out and be a part of this. I promise you, you will not go wrong. So into what vision um, God has given the pastor for this church. So we're asking you to invite your family and friends. And to not, if you do not have a ticket, you can still come. Um, to the breakfast and pay there, but we would love for you all to get a ticket tonight. If you would like to uh, contact um, myself, Sister Ruby White, Sister Lou Jackson, Deacon Smith, Chair the Dice, or Sister Anita Lewis, and get a ticket and tell everybody about the breakfast and be a part of what's going on here at Morning Star Baptist Church. Thank you so much. Amen. Y'all urban girls, y'all come and, and back and get some breakfast so we can show y'all some love. How about that? Hey man, we want to show them some love. Pay for it now. Y'all pay for it. How about that? How about that? Did you want to say something? Oh, we got you. Uh oh, we got you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Kia. Joshua, come out. No. Why you ain't messing on them drums when you come in here? If anybody in here on the drum, they keep past sticks over there. 
Amen. I want you to feel well. I want you to feel like you got an ask, okay? Amen. If ain't nobody on those drums, and you, and, amen, when you hear, you go over there and play those drums to, to, to the glory of God. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Is our prayer. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for this offering that was given. Lord, we pray that revival will start with us. Lord, we pray that you will give us vision, courage, and determination to do the hard work. To make sure that we are giving people an opportunity to be saved. Lord, we pray that you will fill our church with your spirit, with your presence, with your power. God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Brown, for being present with us. We can stand. Bless you, the Lord keep you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Depart this place with the blessings of God. Amen.